thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks uh, to Newton for having me here tonight. I'm really excited because tonight, for the, for the next hour or so, it's all going to be about the command line, right? This, this presentation is drenched in commands. So, so why not start with um, the very first slide? Here, we, um, we stream the, uh, the contents of uh, a file called title to, um, we, we pipe it to a command, cowse, which is a valid command. It's in the, in the cowse package. And with a parameter uh, w, uh, which, which, with which you can set the width of the output, we, um, we display here a cow. So, and this cow has a, has a couple of things to say. First of all, it's the title of, of this talk, um, obtaining, scrubbing, exploring data at the command line. Uh, secondly, my name, Jeroen Janssens. And third, my, my, Twitter, ha my, uh, my Twitter handle. Um, and of course, I would love it if you would follow, him, follow me, but I would love it even more if you would, would give me feedback about, um, about tonight's presentation. Uh, you see, because I am, I'm writing a book uh, titled Data Science at the Command Line. So that title is a, is a little bit sexier than tonight's uh, uh, talk. Um, but what do you expect? It, it's a cow. And, and I, I, can't, I can't say everything about, um, about data science tonight. So I had to focus down to, uh, to obtaining, scrubbing, and exploring. So any questions that you have, any feedback, any, any cool... Uh, command line tool that you've made yourself. Um, they're all very much appreciated. So let me give you a quick overview of what I want to discuss uh, tonight. First, I want to give you some motivation, right? I think that the cow uh, did a pretty good job already, but I have a couple of more reasons uh, why I think you should be using the command line uh, for data science. And especially tonight again, obtaining, scrubbing, and exploring data. I will walk you through the uh, essential tools and concepts of the command line, um, tools that are available by default. Then uh, we're going to look at a real world ex example that's a little bit more modern, and we'll see that the basic tools don't quite cut it, and I'll introduce you to some more modern command line tools. Then we go into uh, various tools for uh, exploration, exploring data. Then a little bit about how you can build your own uh, data science toolbox. Uh, something very exciting called parallelization, where you can parallelize any existing command line tool and also execute it on multiple servers. And then if time permits, um, I want to talk about workflow management, because working on the command line can be quite chaotic. So, I say, if, if time permits, uh, I mean, like I said, questions also during this talk, uh, very much appreciated. So, some, some motivation on, on why I think you should be using the command line. Um, and also, what exactly is, is data science? I know there are a number of definitions out there, but it's good to have one here right now so that we have something to uh, hold on to. And you see, data science, is awesome, right? And awesome here stands, of course, for obtaining, scrubbing, and exploring, you know, the steps that we're gonna discuss tonight, and then also modeling and interpreting uh, data. These two will, of course, also be, also be included in the book that I'm writing, but, you know, given the time, uh, I had to focus on these, uh, on the first three. Um, let's see, and this is a, a model or this has been uh, suggested by Hillary Mason and, and Chris Wiggins. So the command line, what is it exactly? If you, if you open up terminal on your Mac OS, uh, on your Mac, you will, you will see this by default. It's this, uh, this window, and over here you can, you can type your commands, right? On Ubuntu, um, this is what it's looked like. What, this is uh, the default look of Ubuntu. Uh, I will talk a little bit later on how you can, or that it's a good idea to, to customize this. Um, so over here, we, uh, we have the prompt. You will see this dollar sign a lot. I will leave this out, so this would be the username, and this would be the host. And here we're going to type our commands, um, and I will show you, you know, a lot of commands tonight and the output that they generate. And the command line is awesome, too. 
So the command line, even though it has been invented like a couple of decades ago, uh, I believe that it's still a very powerful environment to, uh, to process data with. Because it, it has this so-called uh, REPL, right? R-E-P-L, which stands for Read, Eval, and Print Loop. That means if you have ever played with, uh, with R or, or IPython, you know, you know that you can execute a command immediately, or you can execute a command and you see the output immediately, right? This is very different from writing a program from scratch and then uh, first uh, compiling it uh, and then running it, debugging it. It's, it's a very different loop and this, this really allows you to, uh, to iteratively uh, construct you know, your, your pipeline, your chain of commands uh, and play with uh, your data. There are many tools available uh, already by default, but even today there are a lot of tools being created um, in open source projects, which is great. It is automatable, which is a word. Um, everything that you do on a command line can be automated. It can be scripted. So this is very different from working with a, a GUI, a graphical user interface, where you have to drag and drop and, and uh, navigate through menus and click buttons uh, yourself. This is, this is very manual. Um, Linux or, or um, Unix in general, uh, on the other hand, uh, allow you to, to automate everything. And I think that's a big plus, especially when you uh, want to repeat things, right? If you uh, have lots of data to work with and you want to apply a certain uh, action um, a lot of times, then this is a good thing. Um, now, these days, uh, and a lot of startups, they make, they make use of cloud computing, like uh, Amazon Web Services, for example. And when you log into one of these service, servers, chances are that you're, um, you're going to end up on a command line. And did you know that 500, the 500 fastest supercomputers, 95% um, of them run Linux? So if you ever get your hands on one of those, uh, you better know your command line, right? So b before I start, I would like to say this. Um, also, you might already be familiar with uh, one or two uh, programming languages or, or environments to process data with, right? You might be familiar with R or, or Python, with Pandas. Now, I am not uh, saying that you should abandon that and do everything with the command line instead. What I'm trying to um, bring across here is that the command line can be viewed as one overarching environment in which you have uh, your R, your Python, and a whole bunch of other command line tools that can work together um, on the command line. So, some, uh, some essential tools and, and concepts. Um, I won't be able to ex give you a complete crash course uh, on, on Linux and everything that has to do with it, so I won't be able to, um, or I'm not going to discuss how to uh, create directories or delete files or change um, uh, user permissions or anything like that. What I would like to focus on is, is uh, commands that work with data. So I'm going to walk you through uh, a couple of tasks that have that that we data scientists do uh, on a daily basis, and in the meantime, I will introduce you to one of the uh, to, to some of the most important concepts uh, on the command line. And when I when I talk about tools, I I really mean this this entire list here. It's it's an umbrella term for for uh, executable a script just a one-liner that you do on your, on your command line, a shell command, a shell function, and even an alias. And if you don't, if you don't know uh, what this means, it doesn't matter, we'll get to that. So it's, it's really an umbrella term, so anything that you can do on the command line and, and that you can execute on the command line and does stuff, right? And before I start walking you through uh, a couple of commands, it, it's good to keep the Unix uh, philosophy in mind, right? And, and summarized, uh, it's like this. It's the following three things. Um, these command line tools, they should do one thing and do it well. This is very different from when you, when you think about uh, very big programs um, that try to do everything, right? 
they, they, they try to very often to lock you in and that you have to do everything in that same, I'm not gonna name any names here, but the philosophy um, here is that you, you, you use a whole bunch of commands to accomplish exactly what you want. And because they're so small and can work together, uh, because that is the second uh, part here of, the, of the, the philosophy, is that it's very flexible. And they, they can only work together if they, if they can communicate, right? If they, <clears throat> if they can exchange uh, the data. So the universal interface here is going to be text. All right. Let's say we are given a, a data set. Uh, and it, this is a data set that contains, uh, I believe, 254 uh, instances, data points, and um, it specifies how much a, pers how much a, a tip has been given uh, to a certain uh, bill. Right? When, when, some, when, a, when a party goes to dinner or to lunch. And the features here are, are you know, the amount of the bill, the amount of the tip, the, the, the sex, whether um, he or she was a smoker, uh, what day it was on, time. This is either uh, dinner or lunch, and the size of the party. Right? So th this is as, as raw a as it gets. When you, when you want to view the contents of a file, you can use uh, CAT, which stands for concatenate. But what if you don't remember exactly what, what CAT means, uh, what it does, um, I'm immediately going to int introduce you to this command. It's, it's man, which stands for manual. And this is the one, one of the most important, important commands you should uh, remember because this um, will always give you an overview of which, uh, f first of all, what a certain command does, and secondly, uh, what kind of arguments it accepts. So just keep in mind that, that you know, Stack Overflow is not the only source where you can get some information. Man is, is a very convenient way, and, and I, use it, I use it daily because some commands, they just have parameters that, well, you forget them every once in a while. So keep this in mind, and this is only a small part of it. Uh, it actually gives you a, a nice, well, a, a scrollable interface. You can search uh, through it. So that's, that's good to keep in mind. Right, so text, uh, Cat g gave a very raw, uh, view of our data, not very, not aligned, very, um, wasn't, wasn't pretty to look at. So what we can do here is we can pipe, and this is a very important concept here uh, on the command line, we can pipe this, uh, the output of this command, see, so this is an argument, tips.csv is the file um, name of our data set, and cat produces output onto something called standard onto something called standard output. And by default, it will be, it will be outputted to our screen, right? That is, that is the default behavior here. But what we can do is we can actually uh, chain two commands together by means of a pipe. Um, that means we, 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 we pipe the output of this command into this command, which is CSV look. And I, I said in the beginning that all these tools would be available by the, uh, default, and uh, I lied. <clears throat> there is one uh, package that I, re that I really wanted to include here, and that is uh, CSV kit, which, is, which contains a collection of uh, commands that are really useful for processing CSV data, because that is uh, a very common data format th these days, together with JSON. We'll be looking at that um, shortly. So I might as well uh, introduce it right here. So. I mean, the output here of CSV look, there's nothing uh, standing here, so again, um, it will be outputted to the screen. And as you can see, CSV look is here to uh, nicely format uh, our data set here. Is it an app? Um, I believe it is in pip. Pip install CSV kit. I will give a list of references uh, at the end. Also, if you go, if you're, you know, I see a couple of people here on their laptops, and that's that's wonderful. No judgments. <clears throat> no judgments. Uh, so if you go to my website, um, I think that we have some problem here with the mic. I don't know if, if there's anything I can do. 
Otherwise, I'll just keep on talking. Stand over here. Uh, all right, it, it actually is. Um, yeah, if you go to my website, there is this blog post called Seven Command Line Tools for Data Science. CSV Kit is one of those, and it also gives you a link uh, there. So CSV look here. Um, I'll put it, uh, our data set nicely. So let's, let's do something with the, the, this data set, right? Because um, we're data scientists and we, we, need to, we need to get our hands dirty. Right. Um, right. So looking at files, we've already been looking at it using cat, but what cat does, it just outputs all the, the entire file to your screen. And if you have you know, big data, then uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be you're gonna have an information overload, you know, on your screen, and it's it's very un inconvenient. It works for small files, but what you really want to do is pipe this to a command called less, which will give you just like man does. Man actually makes use of less, um, is give you a a, a scrollable output. It it will just um, it's paginated, so to speak. So you can just go to the next page uh, of your output scroll up and down. Um, two other commands that are very, very often used to just peek at your data set are head and tail. And by default, they will show you the 10 first lines and 10 last lines respectively, but you can set the parameter dash n here to, to specify the number of, of lines that you want. Now this, this command is also really useful to use in a, in a longer pipeline uh, where you have a lot of commands um, chain together and you just you're in this debugging mode right you want to make sure whether the commands you're you're using are, are doing the right thing then it's always good to to use something like um, head um, that will that will reduce the number of lines um, to minimum so that you can so that the, the iterations become shorter and you can um, play with your data more easily question I'm sorry? Yeah, so the question was, do you need to pipe something into head or does head accept a file by itself? That's a good question. And um, the answer is that head does accept a file on itself. Um, so instead of cat, we could have uh, typed, uh, uh, well, head dash n3 uh, tips.csv, right? Um, so even here, cat, it, it's kind of useless. So and, and it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, an ongoing joke in the, in the Linux community that uh, there is this thing called the useless use of cat award. And I, I well, I'm a, I'm a good candidate for that award here. But you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It just spins up, spawns one extra process. And really, th this whole, this whole uh, working with the command line is kind of iterative, right? You, you work from left to right. So what do you do? You start with cat, then you, oh wait, it's a bit too much data. You, you, you press up. You, you pipe, you, you, you type um, you know, uh, the pipe and then head, and this is how you generally go about. So, but the question, uh, well, it was a good question in that most uh, Unix commands also accept a file name by themselves. If no file name has been given, they will, in general, read from, from standard input. Okay. Uh, let's have a look here at tail, last three lines. Now CSV gets, gets the uh, dash, a, dash H um, parameter, meaning, you have to know this, but um, uh, don't, don't output, output a header. We of course lose our header because we're not outputting the first row of our uh, tips.csv data set. Um, now CSV look does not have a man page, but if you specify the dash uh, smaller age, then you will get a uh, uh, some sort of a help on how to use this command. And this is also very very common for a Linux commands. So, especially the older commands will have a man page, and newer commands will well hopefully uh, provide you some help when you do either dash age or dash dash help. What was the last line again? Excuse me. The last line of command. Last line. Oh, dash n is the number. Oh, the Oh yes, all right, very good question. What is the uh, less, less than, um, well, right over here? 
Well, I, I told you about the useless use of CAT award. Is that, is here is, um, I'm, I'm no longer a candidate here anymore because what we're doing here is, <clears throat> how do we explain this? We're, we're directly, well, just piping the, uh, the, the output of tips.csv into, into tail. So we're, 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 we're saying to tail like, hey, you should be reading from this file. So it looks kind of awkward. Um, you will more often see uh, its counterpart um, uh, greater than uh, where we actually uh, output uh, the command, the, well, where we, where we write the output to a command. But um, I mean, it, 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 you will have the same, uh, same effect. So one thing to, uh, to also note is that those pipes, they are streaming. It's not like uh, Linux will first execute the first command, um, and w wait for it to be finished, and then output everything to the second command. No, this is, this is uh, streamed. So it's very fast, and it's even, um, it even makes use of, of multiple cores. So, um, well, that's great. Hey, a second task is uh, filtering lines. Um, let's say we only want to look at uh, those instances which were, well, those tips that were given during lunchtime, then we can use grep. And we specify, um, first of all, first of all the, uh, the pattern um, or the word that, that, we, that we're looking for. Um, and as you can see here, we're directly giving tips.csv as, as, as an argument to grep. We, we could have also catted that file into grep. So I will, I will do this uh, interchangeably, just so you know, you will have the same uh, result. And then again, pipe that into CSV look. So we're being returned here, and it's, it's more than uh, I can put here on the screen, but we're, we're being returned all the lines which just um, contain the word lunch. Now, let, uh, this, this method is not optimal. It works in this case, but let's say that um, we would also include the, the name of the person giving the tip, and this name would include lunch, then this line, and even though uh, he would be um, giving the tip at dinner time, he would still be included here because Grab doesn't really care where, uh, in, in this case, where lunch appears on the line. It's just that if it contains lunch, then I will, I will output it. So here's another command um, called awk. And it does not st stand for awkward, but sometimes it, 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 its syntax is kind of awkward. Um, it's, awk is, is, a, is kind of a, a programming language on its own. And when I personally use it, I always have to look up on how to, uh, how to do things with it. I actually looked up uh, how do I, again, uh, use a regular expression, because that is what you, what you will see here. Uh, how do I use a regular expression just on one particular column uh, using awk? So what's going on here? Um, in this case, we're showing all lines of which uh, the party size which was greater than four. Or to be exact, we are actually um, deleting those lines which contain, of which the, the seventh uh, column, which is size, we're, we're um, well, we're discarding uh, the line if it contains uh, one, two, three, or four. So this is a regular expression here. Um, I don't have time to go into that, but it can be very powerful in, in certain times. So in, if we were to use grep in this case, there are ways to work around it, but, but you would also then, um, well, these, these, two first, uh, these first two columns here would also, um, yeah, they would mess up our results. So awk, again, it, it, it's a very powerful tool and it can do a lot, but I always find myself um, using, using Stack Overflow. <clears throat> All right, so uh, again, another tool that is, um, that's, in, that's in the CSV kit package, and that is CSV grep, and CSV grep allows you to do grep, but then on a certain column, which is great. And because it uses the header information, we can, we can actually specify which column we want to look at by, by, um, by giving the name using dash C. So we, we're look, we're, we want to achieve the same thing as we did last time, right? We, we only want to, want to output those uh, instances of which the party size was uh, five or six. 
or larger. Um, size is the column we're looking at, and the regular expression here, it's, it's the same as here with, with awk, right? One to four in, in, um, in brackets. And dash i actually means inverted, so um, do not output if, if this line, if this column matches this pattern. So th those are three ways to filter lines, and you will see, you will notice that there are always multiple ways to achieve the same thing. Extracting uh, certain columns is, a, is very often, um, well, uh, a thing that we like to do. There might be too much data. Maybe we're all only interested in the numerical data uh, in our data set. So we want to um, extract certain columns. And, um, oh yeah, what we do in the first line is, is actually the same as, as what we did before, but now we're outputting it to a different file. So here you see this symbol over here basically says uh, redirect the output from this command, um, redirect it to a file uh, called size56.csv. <laughs> right? You can, you can chain them together over, uh, as, as, well, you can create a chain as long as you want, but sometimes it's, it's good to just create temporary files. Um, yeah, so um, conceptually nothing, I'm, and, and I don't even know what's going on under the hood. It's just that pipes you would use for, uh, for commands and um, the redirecting, so using, using a, a, a larger than uh, sign yeah, is used for when you want to output to files. It's just a convention. I guess uh, you would then instruct, you know, the shell, which is which is bash. I, I haven't mentioned this, but I'm, su I'm assuming bash here as our shell um, knows that you actually want to create a file, and um, not that there is a, that there is some command called size56.csv. Um, if this file does not exist yet, uh, it will be created. If it already exists, it will be overwritten, um, and well. Uh, to be complete, if you would use uh, two of those larger than signs, you would append the output to that file uh, if it already exists. So, okay, so now we have this file, size 5.6, and we use it in the, on the second line with a cut. And cut, cut allows us to, to extract certain columns or certain characters from each line, right? First, we, we specify that the delimiter um, that we want to use here is a comma, that's with the dash D uh, argument, and then we specify that we want to have columns uh, one and two. All right, very simple. This is just a very small command and it, you know, it does what it does. And um, again here, we're not piping it through, through a CSV loop just to remind you that this is what the raw data looks like. Again, we can use uh, awk uh, for this, um, right? We, we have to specify again that the delimiter is, is, a, is a comma here, the field separator uh, using dash capital F. Now, and then we want to output every line, but then uh, only the first and the two columns. And in awk, every column will, is assigned a variable, uh, and uh, it starts with one and two, and goes up to seven in our case. And there is, of course, uh, again, a command um, uh, from, from CSV kit, and that is, in this case, CSV cut. And we just have to, to specify uh, the column names. This is very, very readable, right? You, you know what's going on. Um, uh, you you want to extract the columns, bill and tip. Now, the, um, the advantage of this is, of course, whenever your, um, your output is, or your data set is, um, well, Whenever you, the columns are no longer in this in this same order, CSV cut will will know how to deal with that because you specified a, the header uh, information and, and it uses that. Whereas with the other commands, you would have to change your command. So this makes it a bit more a bit more readable, um, a bit more uh, yeah, robust. But again, 
you would have to download uh, CSV kit separately. So it's, it is good to know the cut command uh, separately. All right, let's go uh, work with a slightly different uh, data set here. What we're doing is using curl, we're downloading something from the internet. And here uh, at this location, we have uh, a free ebook uh, in text version, uh, in <coughs> sorry, just as, as plain text uh, from Project Gutenberg, um, which is a very ambitious project and it, it scans and uh, makes freely available uh, all these books um, as ebooks in various formats and we're gonna use uh, just the text format. We're going to download that um, using curl. The dash s is to, just to, uh, to say to curl that it needs to shut up. And we're going to pipe this uh, to a command called t. Now please be aware here that this command here is, has, has nothing to do with our command line. This is just like, like this dollar sign here. This is the, our prompt, but, but in this case it's a continuation uh, prompt. So it, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, disregard it, it's just there to indicate that we're still working on our command line, but it doesn't fit on one uh, line. So we're piping this to a command called T. Now it, 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 it works together with the, the analogy of pipes, where you know here we're, we're suddenly uh, inserting a, a, a T piece, and what it does, it, um, it outputs the input it gets to a file here called fin, you know, from Huckleberry Finn, because that's the book here. Um, but it also um, outputs uh, what it gets from the input. Um, well, you can also use it to, um, as, as input for your, for your following commands. So it's, there, it's really uh, useful if you want to uh, save intermediate results, um, if, you, if you want to save it, but also want to continue with it, or if you have T on the end, to, uh, to save it to a file, but also output it to the screen so you know what's going on. So we, we pipe that to, uh, to grep, and what we do here with this regular expression is extracting all the words. And the, uh, the O parameter here, uh, make sure that everything that matches our pattern will be put on a separate line, as you can see here from the output. Um, and the capital E is just to uh, instruct grep that we're, doing, that we're dealing here with, uh, with a regular expression and it, that it has to uh, parse this and not treat this as a literal pattern. And again, we, we, um, we pipe that into T, get saved as words, but we also see it here on our screen. And this is a very, very long list of words, of course. WC, which stands for word count, and it can be used to count words, but it can also count lines and characters. So, so if you apply that uh, to a certain uh, file, you will see first the number of, uh, of lines, then the number of words, and then the number of characters. If you just want to have the number of lines, which is very often used, you would use uh, dash L as the parameter to uh, WC. Okay, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, I was interested here, um, I don't know, I, I saw on, on LinkedIn, I don't know what it was. If you're intelligent, uh, quickly say a word that starts with an A and ends with an E in 15 seconds. Okay, uh, I thought, why should I come up with this? I can use the command line uh, for this in 15 seconds. Um, so what we're doing here, it's, it's probably not the most efficient command line, but it was very intuitive for me to do this. So let me walk you through the command line here. So we're using words, right, as you can remember here, this, is, this file is words, it's a very long file, and every, every line contains just one word. So for each line, we're gonna check if it starts with an A. Th this, this hat here uh, says beginning of the line. So that's the first thing. So, and everything else, everything that not, not matches this pattern uh, is discarded. So the output of that is then piped again to another uh, grab uh, command, but then we wanna make sure that the line ends with E um, and I, I notice now that I'm not even taking into account uh, uppercase uh, words in this case. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. So, and this probably, I don't know if this could have been combined. It, it can, but this, this you know, for me, at, this, at that point, 
that was the most intuitive way to go about and was faster and otherwise I would have to go back into the man page, you know, regular expressions, you know. So the output of this is just a very long list of, of words that start with an A, end with an E, and there are lots of duplicates in here. And what we're interested in here, as you can see here, we want to get the, um, well, first of all, uh, the unique number of words, and then also how often they appear in the text. So we want to use unique, which returns only uh, unique, inst uh, unique lines, but it requires that the input is sorted. So we have to sort everything first, uh, alphabetically. Then we, uh, count, we, we call unique, and if you specify the dash uh, C parameter, it will also give you um, the number of occurrences of each word. Now I'm done, and then we're, all, then we're finished. Uh, we use sort again to, um, but this time on uh, numerical values, you see this column here will be used by sort uh, in reverse order, so dash R N. And I know if, you, if you've never seen before, he's like, what? what is this? I'll just cook up some Python script to do this. Come on. But actually, it's, it's used, th this particular construct is, is used a lot, and you'll get used to it. And you know, you, you, you guys are not now seeing um, I, uh, the unique or the, <clears throat> the output of each individual command. But like I said, this is a very iterative process. So it, it would be much easier to come up with this uh, yourself when you're doing this. Um, and of course, if you are more uh, comfortable uh, working with Python or R, by all means do so. I, I believe that you should be using um, the tool um, that is most appropriate for, for, your, for your task. So what I very often do, once, once I have uh, obtained and uh, you know, scrubbed and explored my data, I very often drop into uh, IPython or IPython notebook. There's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, replacing data, another very common task. Um, so we, we have uh, also a file called fin, as you may remember. This is just, um, this is the, sorry, we use T here to, to store the out, this, this file here. We use T to store it to uh, a file called fin. This is just the text as, as it is on Project Gutenberg. So that's what we're gonna do um, now. We wanna make every word uppercase. So, um, yeah, uh, def null here is just saying, you know, do not output it to screen, just throw it away. Um, well, you can forget that, but I didn't wanna show it up in this slide. This here does um, all the same. It's a little bit more complex, but it also supports Unicode characters. So not just ASCII as, as the first command. Um, Right, we can also use set. Uh, here we want to replace, we're, we're replacing all the spaces with, with underscores. And set and awk are often used or called uh, together. They, they both have their uses. And again, um, set is a little bit simpler than awk. It's very much um, you know, replacing data or outputting, again, just certain lines that match a certain pattern. And in, in practice, um, well, personally, I, I still have to look up uh, very often what I'm doing. So, except for this one here, this one, uh, this tells like uh, I want to substitute everything that comes in these two um, slashes with everything what what's uh, between those two, and then I want to apply globally. So that's all. This is again a very common pattern where you want to replace uh, one word with the other. Summing values. So. <clears throat> now we're already getting a little bit more into exploring, but this is um, what you see here, the top command. It's, um, we use here uh, paste, so um, the paste command. So first, we're gonna remove the header using tail. It's, it's a little bit weird, but you know, using plus two, we're saying output everything but the first line. It is, yeah, you just have to practice a lot with this. I, it's, it's the command line, you know, it's old. So then we're saying, you know, we only want, only want the first column, remember? You know, we're specifying the comma as a delimitator. First column, first field, actually. And then we're gonna pipe that into paste, which what it does here, these are all our individual values that were first on separate lines. 
well, dash has is to specify that you want everything just concatenated or, or you know, uh, as, as one line. But then you should use this as the, delim as the, you know, as the character to use in between each line. So we basically have a very long equation, which we can then pipe into BC, which is, is basically a calculator on the command line. You can pipe equations to it. And what it does now, what we get here, is the total number of um, bills, or all the amounts um, of, of bills in our data set summed together. But we can, of course, also use awk for this. This is not so strange here. Um, we're basically, um, this is almost like a loop where you uh, say for each line, um, increment the variable sum with the value that we're seeing here um, in the first column. And then when you're done doing that, print the sum that we have here. All right, hey, and what, what do we have here? Anyone recognizes this? Oh yeah, that's, that's oh, I hope you guys can see it. This is, uh, this is R, right? We're using here R from the command line. Wow. I'll get to that later. It's pretty exciting. But you can see here, we can use R, we can pipe data into R using, you know, a very, very simple uh, bash script that I wrote a while ago called Rio, R input output. And you can just, um, you know, do R stuff with it. But we'll get to that later. Again, as you can see, three times the same output. Whew, wow, so that, that was um, um, quite a ride, quite a lot of tools we've looked at, um, essential tools, tools that you should know because they're, they always uh, will be available, except for CSV Kit then. Um, so whenever you find yourself on some, some foreign uh, computer, uh, you can, you know, which has Linux, you, you can trust that these tools will be there. Was there a, a question? All right, so I believe you said that, I forgot to mention that the command line was written in assembly and C. Yeah, a lot of the older tools, thank you very much, a lot of the older tools are indeed in, in, in C and, and, and uh, well, yeah, and then apparently also assembly. Um, I mean, they've been, they've been around for a very long time, so they're highly optimized. Um, the good thing is that the command line, or actually your shell, which executes the command, doesn't really care about what, what language uh, you, you've used. So you can use everything, um, all your existing code, and we're going to look at that. You can use your existing code and make them part of the command line so that you can tie them together with everything else that is out there. Question? Uh, I'm wondering if there's a CSV kit equivalent to working uh, with PDF files, like a PDF kit or something to that effect. Okay, so the question is here, is there an equivalent for CSV kit for PDF files? And, well, I, I, I know that there are quite some packages out there that allow you to extract text from PDF. It's not easy because PDF is apparently, well, it's, it's quite an annoying format to work with. Um, I'm sure you uh, have already um, um, yeah, experienced that. But, well, I'm not, I don't know if they're also um, available on the command line, but I, I do know, I mean, a lot of people uh, have to deal with, uh, with PDF files. So I'm sure there, there will be software for this, but yeah. You would just have to do uh, a Google query for this, or I'll, or I'll do it afterwards. All right. Okay, great, thank you very much. So uh, I hear now that uh, CSV Kit has been inspired by uh, PDFTK, which is a whole suite of uh, tools working with PDF. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is here, um, is there something equivalent to RStudio where you have 
uh, on one side, I've never worked with RStudio, I, I always use R from the command line, but I believe then that you would have on one side on your screen uh, your script, and on the other side, um, well, the, the, the R um, uh, console. Yeah, so, so you, you can, everything you've seen uh, so far, you can also just put it in a file and then execute it. That's, that's actually going to be, uh, I'm going to be talking about that. So definitely, there's not a full-fledged uh, GUI, but you can use any editor uh, that you like. I, I can recommend either uh, Vim or Emacs if you want to be productive uh, to create your scripts. Okay. All right, so... We've seen a lot of commands, and uh, I don't blame you if you've, if you've already forgotten like 90% of them. I mean, by, uh, by time, in time and with uh, a lot of practice, you will just remember all these small uh, little command line tools. And um, it takes practice. There is a learning curve, but it's, it's definitely worth. Um, so let's have a look at something that's a little bit uh, more modern, uh, more modern task, uh, web scraping. And we'll see that these... Um, these, these old tools or these, the tools that I've just shown you don't just, um, don't quite cut it. Um, <coughs> and uh, we're gonna use some more modern tools uh, to work with our data. So let's, let's, uh, let's imagine that we have here, um, that we have a website that contains data, right? That this, there is a data set, but it's embedded in HTML. It's horrible, but it, uh, unfortunately, there is still a lot of data uh, embedded in, in, in HTML markup, and that's um, well, well, we can we can we can uh, handle that, right? So we have here a Wikipedia page, Wikipedia page um, with a list of, of countries or territories, and then well, their border area ratio. <laughs> so we want to extract this this table, right, so that we can work with it, just like we could with our first data set, tips.csv. So let's do that. Uh, curl, you've seen this command before. It allows us to, to download any file from um, the internet. And uh, it will output, you can't see the full URL, but you'll, you'll, later, you'll, you'll uh, see it later. Uh, it will output it to, uh, to the screen by default. But um, let's assume that we have um, stored that into a file called wiki.html. So you see here, it, it's, it's horrible. There, there's nothing really we can, we can do with this. Uh, just, just applying grep uh, or awk on this, it's, it, it may work, but you know, it it's doesn't give a good presentation. So let me introduce you to some other, uh, to some other tools. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna use uh, the HTML file here, and we're gonna pipe it through a command called scrape which is um, a tool that I wrote in Python. And all it does, it, it, um, it extracts uh, certain HTML elements that, that match a certain CSS uh, or XPath, uh, if you're interested, uh, CSS uh, selector. So if you, if you recognize, or if you, if you know CSS, then you may recognize here a table.wiki table. So we have a table, a table element, which has the class uh, wiki t table, and what we then want is um, well, all the children that are of the element tr, that are rows, except for the first uh, row. So this is just basic uh, CSS. You, you can use the exact same um, formula right here to style your, your HTML. So in order to obtain this, um, this CSS selector, you would have to go into the source or use, use your favorite browser developer tools. Um, here, this, this sign here is just to indicate that we're continuing on the next line, and here, again, we have this greater than sign, uh, and it doesn't really have to do anything with, with the command. So the output of this command is, well, here it, here it really starts. It's, again, it's, it's, it's tr. Um, it, the, this row actually uh, corresponds or you know this this text here, this HTML corresponds <coughs> to this first row, right? So it works. I, I checked it before, um, but here you know dash b. What it does, it out, it it also gives it also um, encapsulates uh, all our trs, all our rows, into a body and an HTML tag. 
so that the next command is able to work with it, and that's XML to JSON. So HTML, as you know, is a, is a form of XML. And the, the tool XML to JSON, well, as the name implies, converts XML data to JSON data. And, well, the output is here uh, on this page. Uh, JQ is a very interesting command. We're now here just using it to display our, uh, our data in a, in a nicer, uh, in a, in a prettier way. So you can here again see the same, the same elements. We have HTML, body, TR, and it's, all, it's, it's deeply nested, but then here Vatican City, so you know it again corresponds to the HTML that, that we had, and that corresponds to the table on the Wikipedia page. But JQ, it's, it's a relative new tool, and if you work with uh, JSON data, I can really recommend it. It's, it's, a wonder, it's like grep for JSON. Um, and so what you see here is, um, well, we give, it, we give it one parameter, which is sort of an expression given to JQ on how to transform the JSON data that we have into a different format. Um, basically all that we do is we're specifying uh, four new um, um, well, uh, variables in our, in, our, in our JSON dictionary uh, per row, namely, uh, country, border, surface, and ratio. And what we're then saying, it should have the values of these TDs. So TDs are, are the cells in our rows, and we're just, we can index them with one, two, three, and four. It's, it's a bit cumbersome, but it really, as you can see, now we're, we really have that table into, into a, a structured format that we can work with. And last but not least, there is a command JSON to, to CSV, which also as its name implies, uh, converts JSON data to CSV data. And, and you might think like, yeah, this, this is insane. So many, so many commands to just um, uh, obtain this kind of uh, data to, to get to this result. And I agree, but what you have to keep in mind is that it is an iterative process. And because these, these tools are so small, uh, it can all work together makes them really flexible. You can always, you can always um, in some way, uh, achieve uh, your goals here. So, uh, at last, we have now obtained uh, a data set where we have just the border and the surface, and we, we print this again we're using CSV look. And if you combine that all, you, this, is, uh, this is the total command. So, so again, we, we, we download uh, the entire HTML piped it into scrape using this CSS selector, we're able to only output those HTML elements which um, are matched using this, um, this CSS selector. We piped it into XML to JSON, so XML is converted to JSON. JQ can handle JSON, so that's great. And using this uh, beauty over here, we're able to, to transform the JSON data that we originally got, which was deeply nested, and there was a lot of structure in there that we didn't really need into something we could work with. And then finally, JSON to CSV, you know, we're actually only interested in these two um, uh, fields, border and surface. All right, so, so that was um, quite a journey, and this is, this, is, um, this is usually how it goes, right? It, it, again, it all depends on what you're most comfortable with. So just, you know, in yourself, try to think about how you would accomplish um, the same using your favorite programming language. Or where would you make the switch? Would you, would you use requests, uh, the request library in, in Python to download the file? Or would you rather have, um, uh, I don't know, JSON uh, that loads? Uh, in Python to load in the JSON. So, so this is very flexible. And again, whatever works, right? Sometimes I even use pen and paper. So, exploration. Let me quickly check how we're doing on time. I forgot how, what time we started. I would say I still have some time. You'll, you, you still seem, uh, seem, seem interested in this. So let me continue with exploration. 30 more? That's great. Thanks. Exploration. Ooh, look at this. This is GNUplot, which is a very old tool, or maybe still in development. 
Oops. Don't call me that. But, <laughs> but it's, it's indeed, yes, you can use it from the command line. And we have here a, a scatter plot of our, uh, of our data set. <laughs> I don't even remember which data set this was. It might even be uh, what we had previously with, with um, border and surface. Yes, so a very ugly looking scatter plot. We can do much better than this, as you'll see. Um, I just wanted to throw it in here. Some statistics first then, and we'll get to uh, some plots later. Some statistics. We have here, um, again, our tips data set. We remove the header using tail, and we only extract the uh, second column this time using cut. And then we pipe that into QStats, which is a command line tool um, developed here by, welcome, by Tony. He is actually in the audience here tonight. Um, we'll get to that later. We'll get to, we'll get to uh, contributions uh, later. But uh, what QStats does for us is um, it computes a, a couple of statistics for us, uh, the minimum value, uh, the maximum, and, and uh, the mean, and so forth. Uh, and if you just want a mean, you can specify the dash M uh, parameter here to QStats. I would also like to highlight the histogram.py function uh, created by Bitly, or someone at Bitly, uh, part of their, do we have anyone from Bitly tonight? Yes, all right. Uh, great, no, so um, they have, they have uh, a repo on GitHub called DataHex and you just, um, well, again, you have to install it yourself, but once you have that, you can use it um, from the command line, and we have here histogram.py, which nicely uh, outputs a histogram for us. It doesn't fit, fit entirely on the screen, um, but this is just, you know, as, as you're first exploring uh, your data set. So previously, we've just been, you know, obtaining and scrubbing our data, and now we're ready to really, uh, to really get a feel for, uh, for our data. And this is usually the moment where people try to say, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm really going into R or Pandas um, and, and create some plots using, using ggplot in R or ggplot in Python because that is uh, you know, a recent uh, project by Yhat. You can actually use ggplot now from Python. Uh, well, it's a port. And uh, it's, ju it's just fantastic because then you don't have to use matplotlib anymore. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, so you've already seen a little bit um, of, of this, but we can actually use R from the command line. I've created a very simple bash script, you know, um, very simple shell script that all it does, it creates a temporary file, if you're interested, <laughs> creates a temporary file um, that R will read in and it will create a data frame of this, of this CSV file called DF. And then if you also specify dash S uh, here, so dash E, there, there, these two arguments are now combined. You can very often do that on Linux command line. Uh, if you have multiple arguments, um, you know, those, those short arguments, you can, you can uh, put them together. So it loads in the SQL DF package which some of you may know from R, and allows us to do um, well, SQL queries uh, on data frames. And here, actually, SQL on the command line. Uh, what are we seeing here? We're seeing uh, the number of dinners and the number of lunches in our data set. And it's all pretty fast, so it really allows you to, uh, to make R part of your pipeline. If you, if you don't really want to go into R and stay there, but just make it part of your pipeline, you know, maybe you want to use this output for something else, then this is great. It's a very hacky script, but it actually works. Um, and again, I'll, there are references in the end on how if you want to use this, then there, there will be uh, links in the end. You can even use Oh, uh, yes, again, uh, just using pure uh, command line tools uh, that are, that are um, included with Linux, um, we can obtain the same result. Oh, wait, uh, I'm actually using CSV cut here, but of course we could obtain the same with just cut. Um, extract uh, the time, uh, which contains dinner and lunches, extract the time column, remove the header, 
sort of unique C. Again, you, you, you recognize here the, this, this pattern here. We could have also sorted this. Well, it's already sorted here, but it's a pattern here. And now we can even use uh, ggplot here because if we specify the dash g parameter, ggplot will be loaded into R and a, a, a ggplot object called g will be set up with uh, the data frame as its, uh, well, as its data. And then we can continue. I don't know how many of you have worked with ggplot before. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful library, very concise uh, way to, to, uh, to plot things but you can here now actually use it from the command line. And it will output PNG, so you do have to specify some, you do have to either redirect it to a file, a PNG file, or use the display command, which is part of image magic. In any case, when I run this, um, a pop-up will appear, a window will appear with this plot. So all very fast and you know, plots from the command line. Question? So I, I wanna, I now want to talk about creating your own data science toolbox. Because just, just using um, you know, the, the standard tools uh, given to you, um, well, they're, they're always available. But, and and this, the same holds for, if you remember those two screenshots from the terminal on Mac and the terminal on Ubuntu, you know, just using those standard settings, you know, it's, it's not very uh, efficient. It's like, it's like uh, walking into someone else's uh, kitchen uh, or, or a, a brand new kitchen and the, the pots and pans are in the, in the wrong location and there's only one knife uh, that you can use. So what you have to do, um, and you may already be, be, be doing this, you know, using R or Python, is creating your own collection of, of functions or, or scripts. So you're slowly building up your own data science toolbox. And as you do this, you will notice that you will become uh, a more, well, more productive, a more efficient uh, data, data scientist. So a couple of things here is, um, that I want to talk about now is, is optimizing your environment. Um, also, how can you turn those, those one-liners that you've seen, how can you turn them into reusable scripts? Also, how can you turn your existing code you know, your Python, your Julia, your Go, whatever, into command line tools so that you can use them alongside other tools that you can easily share them with others. So there are a number of things you can optimize about your environment, right? There is the terminal, which is actually the application you are typing into. Um, I use the terminal um, here well, it's, it's not the standard terminal. It's a terminal that, that accepts Unicode characters. Um, so if you're working uh, with, uh, with foreign languages, this is very useful. Um, then there is the shell. I've, I've now assumed here bash, but there are lots of different shells available, which all have, you know, a little, which are all a little bit different when it comes to, you know, to syntax. So piping and redirecting, those are all things interpreted by the shell. And the prompt, um, you've seen a lot of, a lot of dollar signs um, so far, but this is, this is my own prompt right here. This, um, this whole line here, let me walk you through it, and this is the place again where we can type, here's the dollar sign, this is the place where we can type commands, but it shows my username, uh, the host on which I am, this is my MacBook Air, my current working directory, which is Wipeland, that's, that's where I work, um, there is a virtual environment called Yplan, and I'm also in a, a, a Git repository on the master branch, and I've made changes. Oh, wow, that's, that's a lot of information, but it's also information you want to have handy if you're, if you're working on these projects. You don't wanna, um, well, it's, it's good to know because it, it, it determines your context and what you can do and, and cannot do. So, um, and then there are, of course, the, uh, the aliases, function, and scripts, and shortcuts. All right, aliases. These aliases, I, um, well, I found them online on uh, Chris Wiggins, his uh, GitHub um, profile. He has a, he has a, a repo there with, with a bunch of uh, aliases, 
And in an in a interview with Kathy O'Neill, um, he revealed that he has over a thousand aliases and over a hundred shell scripts um, um, that he has created um, yeah, over the past well, years. Um, and some of them are, 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 are indeed very productive and they look alike what, what I have. For example, uh, L here in the, in the top alias uh, is alias. Or this, this gets translated by the shell. So before this, this gets executed, the shell just replaces uh, the L with whatever is here uh, in between quotes. And this is the LS uh, tool, which shows you a list of files. And then there are a whole bunch of parameters here um, that apparently uh, Chris Wiggins wants to have activated all the time. So um, there are a couple of others. Uh, apparently, it's also really useful when you make a lot of uh, uh, spelling or, or typing mistakes. So uh, poo would, would be uh, aliased to up and so forth. And I, I really think that the last two, they're really funny. You can, show, you can see that he had an alias. I don't know if he put this in here on purpose, uh, but um, you know, previously when he would type the command onion, um, he would go to the onion, you know, the, the website. But now, so he commented that out, and now when he types onion, uh, his, his shell will politely reply with uh, back to work. So I thought it was pretty funny. I mean, we all have to find ways to, to stay off uh, Hacker News um, and other websites as much as possible because we, we need to get stuff done. All right, I'm digressing. Um, shortcuts. So it's, it's, very, it's very easy to navigate around your file system in, in a graphical way, right? You just you can always keep a good overview of where you are and you can, you can set up shortcuts, you know, um, um, there as well on your desktop if you quickly need to go to some deep directory. But it turns out that you can also do this on the command line. Um, imagine that we have some very deep, often used directory, as you can see here. We can, we can create a, uh, a shortcut using the mark uh, function um, and call it deep. So whenever we want to go back to deep, we just do jump deep, and we're back into that original directory. Now this is actually, these are uh, four functions um, that I wrote a while ago. Um, you can also find them on my website, but if you use the, 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 G, the Z shell, which is an alternative to bash, they're actually included now in the jump uh, package. So this has made me and a couple of others uh, a lot more uh, productive. And all it took, well, yeah, this might seem like a lot, but it's, it's really not, I don't have time to go through it all, but just these four functions have saved me so much time. And this is just an example of how uh, you can really create your own data science toolbox. And again, if you really have something, um, you know, that makes you more productive, and you think, you know what, this might be of use for others as well, by all means, uh, share it. So, like I said, you've seen a lot of one-liners you know, that you type in uh, on the command line, but very often you want to you wanna reuse them. It may seem that a lot of our tasks are, are one-off tasks, but really when you think about it, and especially when it comes to obtaining and scrubbing and exploring data, there are a lot of commands that we use over and over again. And uh, as, you, as you practice, as you spend more time on the command line, you will learn how to detect these patterns. And if you have detected one, you can actually just copy and paste this command and put it into a, uh, a file. And then you can execute it after if you, you've done a, a couple of things. So first of all, you would have to say to the shell, like, what, um, what kind of script is this here? So this is um, determined by the first line here. This is called, these two characters here are, is the, the, the hash bang or the shebang. That's what they're called. We're very um, imaginative here. Um, these, are, these actually represent, for those who are interested, this is actually a human readable representation of magic numbers so that the, the, um, the kernel knows that this is executable, right? So <laughs> what you say here is that bash so should execute whatever is um, in this file. And bash, as you may remember, is, is the shell that we've been using all along. So we can just copy paste the commands into this file and then execute it. 
you do have to need you do need to uh, to give it the, the correct permissions so that you are allowed to execute it. This is with the command shmod plus x and then the file name and then you're able to execute it. And um, remember the beast, right? This was this was a specific um, this this was a um, well, very specific command, right? Everything was hard coded. Sometimes you want to use variables, and you can use these as well in your bash scripts with dollar sign one, which is the first parameter you would give to your file, uh, to your command, and dollar sign two, and so forth. Dollar sign at sign is, we'll, we'll get to that, but you will use everything specified there. Um, exit codes uh, are a way to, 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 to say to the shell, like, okay, how did we do? Th did everything uh, go um, as expected? And if a zero is returned, then everything went normal. Uh, if, it's, if it's not zero, something went wrong. And you can actually use this in your pipeline to, to embed some sort of logic um, in there, into your pipeline. Now, the extension is not important. So let's say you have some Python uh, scripts lying around. Um, because you specify using the shebang uh, that Python should execute this, this code, um, it's actually preferred not to give a, an extension to this file. So .py or .capital R, uh, you can just um, um, leave it away. All right, and so it is very useful if you would add to your path. This is a, this is a, very, this is a collection of directories known to, to your shell, to bash, where to look for these uh, commands. So let's say you would have um, in your home directory uh, a directory called bin, and in there you just put all your tools together, and if you just one time you have to specify this directory into your path, then wherever you are in your file system, you can use these commands, just as you can with uh, the other command line tools. So that's something you only have to do once. Let me give you an example. Here we have a website called Explain Shell. I I think it's very, it's, it's very nice to, to know in general, especially if you're learning the command line, uh, to know this, this website, explainshell.com, because what you can do is you can give it exactly the command that you want to execute, and what it does, it gives you a step-by-step -step explanation of what's going on, like what does each parameter mean? You don't have to sift through these man pages yourself. It will give you exactly uh, here we've specified the tar command, which can be used to uh, extract and compress uh, files. Uh, X, Z, V, F. Um, first one is, you know, extract the file. Then uh, there's a certain uh, compression method that you want to use called gzip. B verbose, right, dash V. Uh, tar is one of those awkward commands where you don't have to specify a dash here. It's, um, so even, you know, there's this Unix philosophy, but there are lots of commands, you know, like, uh, like find uh, that, that don't really adhere to this. So, so don't take it all too, too seriously. Um, like I said, nice little website, very useful, but of course we want to do this from the command line, right? So let's, let's write one. And this is it. This is uh, another tool that I, that I wrote. I'm just showing you lots of tools that I wrote, but just to illustrate to you that it's actually really easy to create something uh, that can be reused. So let's go through this again. Uh, these are just some comments. Well, the first one, again, our shebang. So bash should execute this. This is all ignored because it's, it starts with a hash. Uh, here, what we do is we say the variable command should be everything that, we, um, that we've specified as arguments to our uh, explain command. So um, you're basically storing, um, you know, your command that you're giving. So tar um, uh, xvzf, all right, um, to command. Now this is a variable that we can later reuse. And that's what we do here. We have here a URL with command. This will be uh, substituted with the value that's, that's, uh, that command contains into a new uh, variable called URL, just, just to make your, your code a little bit more readable, but it's not really necessary. We could have done it all using just this, um, this dollar sign at. Then we use curl, again, to download. You remember, download the file from, um, 
from the internet, and we pipe that to scrape, which again specifies a CSS selector, and then we use some set um, magic to extract just, um, well, to basically remove the HTML tags. And what it gives you here, I, I use it from the command line. Here, everything is put here, tar, x, z, v, f. It's put into command, curl is being run. Uh, you don't see it here, but this is the output. And this is exactly, well, almost exactly, I, I, what I don't do is I also ex I don't extract the file name, as you may see here. Um, I don't think I extract dash f. We'll have to look at that. But what you see here, well, nicely formatted. But because the creator of this website used uh, sensible HTML, we were able to extract extract that. Oh, actually, we do. So now we again have a text version. So it's it's almost like man or dash dash h, right? But um, now we can use it from the command line. So command line uh, tools can also be created from existing codes, existing code, your R or Python code. What you have to do is you have to be able to accept, accept uh, standard input, right? Everything, you have to be able to pipe something uh, to it. You have to write the standard output. That would be the screen by default. Uh, standard error, it's, that's where all the errors uh, are put on by a certain um, command. Parse command line arguments, which is very uh, cumbersome, but there is a solution for that. It would be nice if you would provide some help, so how would your command uh, be used? And again, uh, with some grain of salt, try to take the Unix philosophy into account, so make, try to make your tools small, don't try to reinvent the wheel um, over again. So here's just one example. It's Python code, as you may recognize, uh, but using a package called docopt, you don't have to uh, well, put a lot of work in specifying your command line arguments. You just specify it as it is. This is what you would expect if you would say dash h, well, help. Um, and we can specify our parameters here. So dash n, it, do not output a trailing new line. And this command is just, it's a silly command. It's, um, I call it pico. It, it's just created for this presentation. It's... Uh, well, it's like echo, it would echo whatever you give to it. But here you can see if we run pico.h, it gives you help, so this is nice to the users, right? It also returns the version, because that's what I've specified right here. And it does what it, what it tells you. Um, so a few words about datasciencetoolbox.org. This is uh, a URL that now simply redirects to a GitHub repo. But this GitHub repo is uh, both a collection of command line tools, uh, some of which I've shown you uh, tonight, but it's also a vagrant environment because what I haven't shown you tonight is how cumbersome it can be to install all these individual command line tools. Uh, they all have their own uh, package managers, or they will use make, and it's very cumbersome. So uh, what I've done, and a couple of others as well, and, and we're working together actually to come up with an even better environment. What we've done, we've created an environment, a so-called vagrant environment, um, so that you can uh, get started within minutes, whether you're on Linux, Mac OS, or on Windows, right? Everybody is invited to this party. What it does, it runs on top of VirtualBox. So you have a virtual machine running on your own laptop, Right? a whole separate machine, and what it does, it installs all these tools for you so that if you want to try this out yourself, you can, uh, well, you just have to issue two commands, and you don't have to install everything yourself. Question, yes? Uh, yeah, earlier you showed us uh, scripts for dash environment and Python environment. Yeah. Is it possible to write a script for our environment? Yeah, there is this uh, tool. Rio? Yeah, uh, well, with Rio, yes, you could use Rio. So the question is, can we also do this for R? Um, and the answer is yes, well, there's Rio, but there is also something called little r, uh, which you can use to uh, make R part of your pipeline. So I have quite a, a few things to talk about, but since we, you know, we, have a, we had a couple of questions, and I really appreciate this. Uh, I think this is great. But this does mean that, and I, do, I do really do respect your time, so this does mean that I have to... Um, well, well, that I would have to stop here and jump to the conclusion. 
So parallelization, well, I really recommend that you check out GNU Parallel because it allows you to parallelize existing command line tools. My, my apologies for just going through this. Um, it allows you to, to, to really run uh, existing tools on multiple cores, on multiple CPUs, and on multiple servers, right? J from the command line, it's all in there. You don't have to look at packages in R or in, or, you know, or the, uh, or, or in Python to make your program, your code, um, well, distributed or parallelized. Uh, there's a lot of functionality for resuming failed jobs and, and gathering the output there, so I can really recommend that. Okay, so just like I did for parallel, just a few words about workflow management, and then I'll give you um, my conclusions. So as you've seen, working with the command line uh, can be very chaotic, right? It's, it's just a lot of commands all together. Um, and this is, uh, this is because we invoke many different commands, right? And we create custom command line tools of our, of our own. And we also have lots of different files to work with. So, so it can be, um, can be tricky if you, if you want to uh, pick up an existing project in a couple of weeks or even pass it on to one of your colleagues. Um, you know, the, the backend engineer that has to implement my, my hacks does not appreciate this. So, um, there is a tool called Drake, and Drake is like make, but then for data, created by Factual, and it allows you to formalize the steps of your workflow, right? So, download the HTML, extract certain elements, um, convert it to JSON, and so forth. It allows, it allows you to, to formalize this in steps and the dependencies between them. And this has, has the advantage that first of all, your entire workflow is, 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 is well defined. It also means that once, you ha once certain steps have been executed, like downloading a, a very large file, not just HTML, but what if it's, if it's, uh, if it's a terabyte ooh, um, from S3, um, if you have all your steps in one script, that mean, and you run this script, that means that all the steps will be executed again. So if you have, uh, but if you have a workflow in Drake, Drake will recognize this and will then uh, just skip this step and move on to uh, steps that do need to be executed. So this is sort of what it looks like. Um, you can use variables here. Um, so this arrow here the, the term is like, okay, we have some uh, input here, there's no input, but the output is top.html. We just download this file. This, these are the top ebooks from Project Gutenberg, and we pipe that into output, which is here. So you don't have to specify things uh, more than once. And then there is a second step, which depends on top.html, so Drake will recognize this, and also, um, will generate um, an output file based on this variable here. So in here, we by default get the top five ebooks from Project Gutenberg, but if we then want to get the top 10, uh, we don't have to download the HTML again, which is actually, it's not a big deal in this case, but just imagine that you have a very big file or a very long uh, process here. Uh, we don't have to do that again. Drake will recognize this and just execute everything as necessary. So it's under um, active development. Um, installing it is a bit tricky, so I do, um, well actually, you just now have to go to their website and, and check out how it's installed. Um, but in any case, I can recommend it. So time for some conclusions. Um, well, thanks, I was able now to just finish uh, the presentation albeit with the, the last two sections a bit in a hurry, uh, but we do have some really good questions, so I think that is, that is worth uh, something as well. So I hope that I have been able to convince you that, that the command line is definitely uh, a great environment for doing data science. Um, not just you know, obtaining, scrubbing, and exploring, but even modeling and in, you know, interpreting data. Um, but I guess you will have to uh, wait for the book uh, that I'm writing to also hear about those other two steps. Now I do want to mention again that the command line does not solve all your problems, right? Um, it, is, it is okay 
to, to just um, use it for one or two things and then continue with, uh, with R or Python. I keep saying this, but of course I also include, um, well, any other programming language which you like to use. You can even, um, uh, well, perhaps from your programming language uh, run certain, uh, run command line tools. So there are various ways in which you can integrate the command line with your existing toolbox. So where to go from here? Well, if you really want to try this out, then I can recommend, um, first of all, installing uh, the data science toolbox. Because if you're, if you're on Windows, you will be um, presented with a completely different terminal. It's, um, it's, it's something called the PowerShell. And I don't know anything about the PowerShell, all that it's very different from what I've presented today. And so, so the data science toolbox allows you to get up and running really fast. Um, alternatively, you could go on to Amazon Web Services and just launch an instance. They have a free tier. You can just you know, run uh, a computer in the cloud um, for well, quite some time until it will start to, um, to cost anything. And then I recommend you to do a, a tutorial if you're completely new to this, right? So I've only been able to, to, um, to discuss the tools, the command line tools that have to do with, with data, with processing data. So, but there's a whole lot more to this. Um, a practice, practice your one-liners, uh, create scripts. And again, if you do have anything, any, anything ranging from questions, comments, critique, um, Stroop waffles, so or, or scripts, anything that you would like to share or ask me, uh, you are more than welcome. So, so like I mentioned, QStats created by by Tony, um, it, it, it's in its own GitHub repo, which is completely fine. But it does also get installed when you install the data science toolbox. So, and I, I think that if we if we work together on this, then we can create really uh, a good data science toolbox. Um, and I should mention again, um, or include R and Python again, because that will also be installed by the data science toolbox. Great. So these are some references. Um, I'll leave them on here. And I want to, well, quickly say um, thank you very much. Here's my email address. If you have any questions, you can also, of course, uh, contact me on Twitter. This, there is also my website. And then, Thank you very much for everything, for listening. And then, I'm not sure if we actually have time left for questions. Yes, I will be at the bar. Um, <laughs> Okay, great. I see the first one over there. When, everyone, when, you, when you do leave, do you have a folding chair? Pick it up. Please stack it over here. It just makes life a little easier. Yeah. Right over there. Yes. So how much can you do with Windows commands? I, I believe that you can do a whole lot these days, but it uses, um, I believe, .NET. Now, I really ha don't have, have I, I shouldn't say too much because I don't have any experience with it, git but. Git bash. Hmm? Oh. If you install git on your Windows machine and install the bash terminal, that has almost everything you saw today. All right, so we hear here Sigwin. But then again, if you're gonna, if you if you're willing to install Sigwin, I can, you might as well just install a virtual box and have a, a complete uh, Linux environment yourself. So, okay. Any other questions? Oh yes, I see one over there. Do I have, have I done any benchmarks when it comes to uh, performance or speed, um, Bash versus Python? And uh, honestly, I have not. Um, but what I do know, I expect this to be, uh, in some cases, a little bit slower when compared to, for example, doing everything in Go. 
But what I do know is that this gets the job done much faster. And that's, that's what, why, why I think we as data scientists uh, like to do. We like to get stuff done. Um, but then again, once you have your prototype and you do need something in production, um, it may be worthwhile to implement this into some other language. Thank you. Uh, so third question. Last one. Last one. Um, I find I often write my little utilities in shell or rather than Python because Python takes a long time to load when you call it from shell. Is there a particular way you come up with to, to make it like snappier to load your Python command line program? Okay, so is there a way so uh, apparently the Python uh, interpreter takes takes some time to uh, to start up. And I'm not aware of any solutions for Python. I know that for Java, which takes even longer, there's something called Drip, which, um, <laughs> yes, they have a lot of nice coffee analogies right there. Uh, what Drip does, it, it reserves an instance of the JVM for you so that when you want to run on a JVM, when, when, when you want to run something again, it's there for you to use. Um, and I'm not aware, actually, of something for Python. Um, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.